Let's solve leak code 1299 replace elements with the greatest element on the right side. So we're given an array and we want to take each element in the array, for example 17, and replace it with the greatest element on the right side of it. So we scan through 18, 5, 4, 6, and 1. The greatest one is 18, so we can replace 17 with 18. The last element, 1, doesn't have any values that come after it, and the problem wants us to replace it with a negative one. So basically what I do is just consider that there's an imaginary negative one over here that's not a part of the array, but we're just gonna replace one with this negative one. Now, if you don't know how to solve the problem, the first thing you wanna do is draw a picture. This is gonna make it a lot easier for you to visualize it and notice patterns. So once you've, once you've drawn the picture, choose the easiest way to solve the problem first. So we already kind of did that. So to replace 17, we're going to look at every element that comes after it. So each of the five elements, and we're going to take the maximum of these five elements. And we see that 18 is the max, so we replace 17 with 18. We can repeat this process. So for 18, we look at the last four elements. We see that the max is 6, so we can replace 18 with 6. To replace 5, we look at the last three elements. Again, the max is 6, so we replace 5 with 6. To replace 4, we only look at the last two elements. Again, the max is 6. To replace 6, we only have to look at the last element, which is 1, so we can replace 6 with 1. And of course, 1 is going to be replaced with negative 1. Once you draw it out, it's pretty easy to recognize the repeated work that we're doing. Because of the repeated work, this solution runs in O of n squared time. It's also obvious that we're, since we're doing a lot of repeated work that there is a better solution. So let's try to analyze it to come up with a pattern that we can use to make it more efficient. So the first thing that I notice is that the new value in position zero is equal to the maximum of each value that comes after it. So in the array from, in the array from position one, to position 5. To get the new value in position 1, we did something very similar. We scanned through uh, each of the last four elements. So we took the max of the array from position 2 to position 5. So this makes it even easier to recognize the repeated work that we're doing. We're taking the max in the array from one to five, and then we're doing uh, the max again from two to five. Wouldn't it be easier for us if we took the max from two to five first and then stored that value, and then to get the max or to get the new value in position zero, all we have to do is take that stored value and compare it with the original value in the array in position one. Let me draw it out to make it, e to make it even easier. So the, the thing to notice is that these two equations that we wrote to get the new value in position zero, they're both equivalent. But in the original value over here, we have to get the maximum of five different values. Over here in the new one we wrote, we only have to compare two values to get the maximum. This cuts down on all the repeated work. So the hint here is that to get the new value in position zero, we have to first get the new value in position one. And to get the new value in position one, we have to get the new value uh, in position two first. So the, this problem leads us to iterate through the array in reverse order to cut down on the repeated work. So we're going to start at the end of the array and then compute the new values in reverse order. Of course, the new value in the last position is simply going to be negative one because that's like our base case. Okay, so let's... Uh, 
go through it in reverse order. So our max value initially up until this point before we've even gone through the array is just negative one, right? That's our base case. So we're gonna replace one with negative one. Now we wanna recompute the maximum, right? And we only have to look at two values to do it. We only have to look at positive one and negative one. So our recomputing the max up until this point is gonna be positive one. So we can replace six with positive one. Now we're gonna recompute the maximum again and all we have to do is look at six and one. The six is greater, so six is our new maximum. We can replace four with six. Now we're gonna just keep repeating this, right? So our new maximum up until this point is six because six is greater than four. We just have to look at two elements. So we can replace five with six. Now we're gonna do it again. The max up until this point, we just look at five and six. Six is greater, let's replace 18 with six. Now let's recompute the max up until this point. 18 and six, 18 is greater. So we can replace 17 with 18. Now we can recompute the max here, right, between 17 and 18, but there's no point to do it because there's no more elements that we have to replace. So now we've done it, all we had to do was go in reverse order, which cut down on all the repeated work. We didn't need to use any extra memory, and therefore the solution, the runtime, is just O of N. Now let's write the code. So before I write the code, I like to write a few comments to remind myself what to do. So we remember that the initial max can be set to negative one, right? Because that's the last value, uh, that's what the last value will be replaced with. And the reason this works is because uh, it'll eliminate some edge cases for us and we know that every value in the array is positive. So we won't have to run into any extra edge cases. The next thing we wanna remember is reverse iteration. Uh, we're going to start at the end of the list and go backwards. Lastly, we know that the new max is going to be computed by taking the maximum of the old max and the uh, previous position in the array. Uh, keeping this in mind, it's pretty straightforward to write the solution. We're going to initialize the write max to be negative 1. Then we're going to iterate through the array in reverse order uh, without creating a shallow copy of the array. We can start at the last value in the array. We're going to iterate in reverse order and we're going to stop once we get to the beginning of the array. We're going to replace the value in the the current value in the array with the right max. We know we have to recompute the maximum, right? But we're overwriting the value in our array, but we need this value to compute the new max, right? Just like we wrote in the comments. So when we compute the new max, let's do it before we overwrite this value. Lastly, let's update the current write max with the new max that we just computed. And the return value that this function wants is the array itself. So we can do that. And of course, let's submit it and see that it worked perfectly. So these are the steps you can take to solve this problem.